hydatid cyst. So, this is also known as hydatid disease. Hydatid disease is also known as echinococcosis. And this echinococcosis, you know that it is zoonosis. So, hydatid disease, what is the other name? Hydatid disease, it is also known as echinococcosis. Echinococcosis. And you know this is zoonosis. Zoonosis means mainly it's an infection of animals. And it is seen in sheep grazing areas. This hydatid cyst or hydatid disease, it is endemic in Mediterranean countries like Middle East, Far East, South America, Australia, New Zealand and East Africa. What are the species which are responsible? So you know that the most common species responsible for hydatid disease, this is Echinococcus granulosus. So the most common species that is Echinococcus granulosus. There is second species that is Echinococcus multilocularis. This question was asked in a latest exam. The question was, which species is responsible for malignant hydatidosis? What is the meaning of malignant hydatidosis? The condition in which multiple organs are involved and in one organ multiple cysts are there. So malignant hydatidosis. So obviously the organism is what? Multi. How to remember? Multiple organs, multiple cysts. So multilocularis. This is responsible for malignant hydatidosis. This was latest question. Malignant hydatidosis. Apart from Echinococcus multilocularis, there is Echinococcus vogelii and Echinococcus oligarthus. These are the species responsible for hydatid disease. Now see the life cycle of hydatid disease. First, it's a zoonosis means mainly it's infection of animals. What is the definitive host? Definitive host means the host in which sexual phase of cycle is occurring and intermediate host means the host in which asexual phase of cycle is occurring. So definitive host, you know, it's dog. Intermediate host, it is sheep. It is sheep. So the question, what is accidental dead end intermediate host? So accidental dead end intermediate host, that is man. And in man, there is no human to human transmission. So there is no human to human transmission. No human to human transmission. transmission. So, accidental dead end intermediate host without human to human transmission that is man. Now, what is the root of infection? Just like amoebic liver abscess here also the root of infection it is fecal oral. Root of infection this is fecal oral and what is the infective stage? It is eggs of echinococcus. Eggs of echinococcus. Okay. So, what is the life cycle? See, dogs are passing eggs of echinococcus in the fecal matter. Whenever the fecal matter is going to contaminate food and water and it is accidentally ingested, what happens? There is hydrated disease. Now what happens? Whenever these eggs are ingested, these eggs will be converted into a larva. And what is the name of this larva? It is known as hexacanth or oncosphere. So the name of larva, it is hexacanth or oncosphere. Oncosphere. The larva, it is having hooklets. So, it is going to penetrate the mucosa in duodenum. Oncosphere, it is going to penetrate the mucosa in duodenum. After penetrating the mucosa in duodenum, what happens? The larva enters into systemic circulation via IVC, but mainly it enters into portal vein and via portal vein, it reaches liver. So, there are two routes here. It's very easy to understand. If it enters into portal vein, that's the main route, or it might enter IVC. Via portal vein, which organ is involved? So, most commonly involved organ, that's liver. And via IVC, it is going into right atrium, right ventricle, and then lungs. So, what? The second most common organ involved, that is lungs. After that, it is reaching left atrium, left ventricle. And from left ventricle, it is pumped into arterial circulation. So, what are the other organs involved here? There is involvement of spleen, kidney, brain and bone. So, there is involvement of liver. That's the most common organ. Followed by lungs. Followed by spleen. Followed by kidney. Followed by brain. Followed by bone. Followed by brain. 
followed by bone so these are the organs involved the question is asked most commonly affected organ obviously liver and the second most common that is lungs now the larva reaches these organs so what happens visible hydatid cyst develops three weeks after infection so after this infection you will find visible hydatid cyst so this visible hydatid cyst it is seen after three weeks it is seen after three weeks of infection after three weeks of infection now whenever there is a well formed cyst there are three parts of cyst the outermost is pericyst pericyst it's a fibrous capsule derived from host tissue after that there is ectocyst and then innermost layer that is endocyst so you can see the parts of cyst this is pericyst it's a fibrous capsule after that there is ectocyst and the innermost layer this is endocyst clear so pericyst actually pericyst it's a fibrous capsule and this fibrous capsule it is derived from host tissue so pericyst it is fibrous capsule fibrous capsule and it is derived from host tissue host so pericyst is the part of host endocyst and ectocyst is the part of parasite what is this ectocyst this is outer gelatinous membrane ectocyst it is outer gelatinous membrane this is outer gelatinous membrane clear and the endocyst endocyst is inner germinal membrane so this one this is endocyst this is inner germinal membrane inner germinal membrane clear so how the cyst is going to receive its nutrition the nutrition comes from this pericyst region via diffusion so if there is a situation when the cyst is calcified what do you mean the calcified cyst means in majority of cases it is suggestive of dead cyst now what happens to the scolex in definitive host and what happens to the scolex in intermediate host so the scolex it develops into adult tapeworm in definitive host in definitive host the scolex develops into adult tapeworm and in intermediate host in intermediate host this scolex develops into new hydatid cyst there is another term known as hydatid sand so see what is this hydatid sand hydatid sand clear so hydatid sand it is freed brood capsules and scolex and these are present in hydatid fluid so what is this these are freed brood capsule freed brood capsules and scolex in hydatid fluid scolex in hydatid fluid in hydatid fluid clear that is hydatid sand now there is another situation hydatid cyst can die so how you will know that there is death of hydatid cyst whenever there is degeneration of membrane within the cyst or there is development of cystic vacuoles or if there is calcification of wall these are indirect evidences that hydatid cyst is dead so hydatid cyst can die with degeneration of membranes if there is development of cystic vacuoles and we just discussed that whenever there is calcification cyst is not getting the nutrition and cyst is dead but one important point calcification of wall does not always imply it does not always imply that cyst is dead in majority of cases it is suggestive of that cyst is dead but not always subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from preplada